Per Delsing. You are a member of the Nobel Prize Committee for Physics, and uh, I wonder if you have talked to the prize laureates before the press conference? Yes, so, so we, we called them up uh, about uh, 40 minutes ago. Uh, we reached both, both of them, and uh, they were, of course, very happy. Where, where were they? Uh, so, uh, Serge Haroche was uh, out on the street somewhere, <laughs> together with his wife. Uh, David Wineland, uh, we woke up in the... It's half past four in the morning, so he, he was asleep. <laughs> so, what did they say? Uh, well, I, I think they were both very happy. Uh, and, and both of them expressed that they were very happy to share the prize with the other. Uh, I just wonder, both of them work in the field of physics called quantum optics, uh, which has been very active since 30 years ago, like since 1980s. Uh, and both have worked uh, in parallel, or did they work together somehow? So, uh, they, they work in slightly different disciplines because they are, uh, one is looking at photons, light particles, and the other one is looking at ions, but they have, their, their methods have very much in common. Uh, and, and of course, they know each other from conferences, etc. So, they, they are actually good friends. This is a very active field of research. So, what did they do that the others did not? So, th they have managed to capture and control quantum particles in a very precise way. So, they, for, for instance, Harosh is using two mirrors <laughs> to, to capture photons in between the mirrors. And then he's sending in atoms between the mirrors, like this, to probe the, uh, to probe the state of the photons. Uh, uh, David Wineland is, is doing a little bit the opposite because he's, uh, he's instead uh, creating a little trap for ions uh, and then he's shooting laser light in to control uh, the ions, both to control and to, to sort of measure the, the system. Uh, and the trick is to capture just one particle, one photon, or one... Yes, yeah, so they can either capture just one or a few, or they can... And, and so they have such good control that they can sort of determine how many particles they trap. How hard is it to get just one? <laughs> oh, it's... So it's, it's hard, and it's also very hard to keep them there so that they don't fly away. So you need enough time to study these quantum particles. It's not just that you need the tools to be able to measure, you also need to have them there for a sufficiently long time so that you can study time evolution of these quantum particles. At the press conference you mentioned some key words from quantum physics like superposition and the coherence. Yes. Can you say something about so, it? Superposition is the fact that uh, uh, quantum uh, object can be in two states simultaneously. This is what we call superposition. So for instance, a particle can be in two places at the same time, and it's not really until we measure it that we sort of pin down in which of the two places it is. But there's equal, there can be an equal probability of being in two places at the same time. And then the coherence is when it and falls the coherence apart. is when, when the quantum system loses this property of being in a superposition. So it's like being in two places at the same time, or like the Schrodinger cat being yes. alive and but dead at some... And, and, and so th this in particular is, is one of the things that has been studied uh, by the laureates. They have been able to produce these kind of Schrodinger cat states, mm -hmm. and they've been able to study how it actually decays in time. And, and what they find is that the, the decay is faster the more different the two states are. And of course, if you have, uh, like in, in the Schrodinger cat paradox, where it, the, the, the issue is whether a cat can be dead or alive, de dead and alive at the same time, those two states are, of course, very, very different, not only for the cat owner, but also for quantum physicists. And since they are so different, that state would decay in, in, in an extremely short time. It's a little strange because the decay must be the most common uh, phenomena in the world. Yes. We'd never see it. Yes. 
uh, and, and it's precisely that all the things we see happen after the decoherence have taken place. But if we can look into the quantum world and look at single particles, then we can actually uh, uh, investigate these properties of superposition. But in normal life, they have decohered, so we don't see it. Cut is dead or alive. Um, you mentioned an application of these studies in quantum physics, like quantum computer. Um, is it much better than the computers we have today? Well, first of all, one should say that uh, it's, th that's a very, it's, a, it's a distant dream and it will take a long time before there's anything like a quantum computer. But what, what especially Wineland has done is to take one of the very first steps to show that you can do quantum operations on, on a, a quantum system, that's the first step towards a quantum computer. But what would the quantum computer do that the computers cannot? So there, there are certain algorithms that the, the, a quantum computer could do much, much faster than an ordinary computer. Um, and and the, the, the prime example is to factor large numbers into primes. That For would be... That, yes, that would be extremely much faster with a quantum computer. But future will tell, uh, that I, I'm sure there will be also a number of other things that can, can be useful on a quantum computer. So why don't we have it here now? Yet? Oh, because, because this is very hard to do. And you see, uh, today we have awarded a Nobel Prize to, to these two guys who have, have taken the first steps to, to have control on, on a single system. But to make a quantum computer, you would have to have the same amount of control on very many particles at the same time. So it will not come next year as a Nobel Prize. I can almost promise that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us.